Interest in environmental, social and governance, or ESG, has been growing in all regions of the world. And since the COVID-19 outbreak, experts say ESG issues have come to the fore. The coronavirus crisis has certainly accelerated some of the key trends behind ESG. And I think one of the key reasons for that is it's because it's reminded companies of its social purpose that all companies exist to provide a valuable product or, or, or service to society. And they do so in a way that minimizes their environmental harm and that maximizes their societal responsibility. LVMH, for example, switched from making perfume and cosmetics to producing hand sanitizers. Ford converted airbag manufacturing capacity to produce masks. Analysts say companies that redeploy their know-how to help society during times of crisis also have the ability to seize new opportunities when the pandemic is brought under control. During the financial crisis 13 years ago, 12 years ago, saying, hey, now the world will change and everybody will care about every, everybody else and, and companies will suddenly become um, caring for the world and Wall Street is going to have a heart. And from most assessments, that didn't quite happen uh, to that extent. So, so the way I look at it is it is an opportunity, um, but it's, it's not a given. It does require leadership. It does require all of us maintaining focus rather than, you know, once the virus is behind us, just it'd be completely forgotten. According to Fidelity, there is a growing body of evidence that shows that companies with high ESG standards are more resilient during times of crisis. For example, ESG funds were spared from the market sell-off earlier this year. Companies that uh, behave in a sustainable way, in a responsible way, I think will attract greater levels of investor interest, which in turn will lower their cost of capital. And these companies will therefore have a competitive advantage versus some of their peers who are not embracing those sustainability principles. Over the long term, it is our belief that by investing in sustainable companies, you will have you will see superior long-term returns. One of the you know barriers that have uh, you know been highlighted in the past has been that sort of misconception that investing sustainably would automatically lead to some sort of give up. And what we've seen is, um, particularly through this this volatile period, a lot of ESG strategies holding up very well. ESG factors have also become an integral part of the investment decision-making process. Companies performing well on ESG perform, uh, on, on ESG characteristics linked with, with good investment performance is something that, that we're seeing um, become part of the sort of understanding within investors. We're seeing consumer uh, investor demand continue to grow, so already we undertook a, an annual uh, survey uh, on, on, on attitudes around this area. And, and last year, we already saw 90% of those investors saying that you know, ESG issues were important as part of their investment decision making. I think we see that, that continue uh, and we'll see that continue to rise. I mean, think of an example, Tesla, in terms of its market cap, now actually is the most valuable automobile company. Now, for a company that has revenues that are peanuts relative to a, the other automobile companies, why is it that it is considered the most valuable company by investors? Because the investors have a view of where the world is headed and Tesla is very well positioned to take advantage of that. In the first quarter of this year, BlackRock said it saw huge net inflows to high ESG products, while traditional products saw some outflows. But what we're doing is we're providing high ESG versions of all our flagship products. That overall trend that we're seeing much greater flows into high ESG versions will continue. I think the COVID, uh, as the, the COVID experience that we're still going through will heighten this. So high ESG companies are high governance companies, and those companies are companies that we've seen uh, year to date performing uh, significantly better than, than market indices. 
the world's largest asset manager has also reportedly written to over 500 companies in the Asia-Pacific, putting them on notice that it expects greater disclosures on sustainability. These companies are in climate-intensive, carbon-intensive sectors, you know, mining, oil and gas, utilities, etc. Um, and being on notice essentially is a message to the companies that we think in that sector, these issues are serious issues that uh, the whole board needs to be fluent about and management needs to be focusing. Um, and we are looking for these companies to provide greater disclosure of their practices and targets or meaningful targets over the next three to five years on where they expect to be. As ESG goes mainstream, analysts say companies that don't adopt sustainable practices quick enough may risk losing out. It's not just institutional investors, you're starting to see like all the stakeholders actually looking at a company, not just now for the financial performance, but at their ESG performance. Because if you look at trends like climate change, etc., if they're not looking at how they're future-proofing their business for climate change, then it is a material risk. It's actually a financial risk. If you're putting money into companies that are not behaving in a way that protects the future of society and the planet, then I think that yeah, they're in trouble. I think Nokia, right, is a classic example. It used to be this uh, amazing success story from Finland. And today it's very often taught as a, as a company that did not react sufficiently fast to this entire smartphone, smartphone you know, call it opportunity, call it threat. And, and, and it's, it's not quite where it used to be. So, and people are saying there will be a lot of stories like that in the, in the sustainability space as well.